On a cold winter's day, a group of hedgehogs huddle together for warmth. This helps them keep warm, but soon enough they hurt one another. Their spikes press against their neighbors, and the pain drives them apart. But then, of course, they get cold again. So they get closer. But then they hurt one another again. They repeat this dance of coming closer and keeping distance until they find a happy medium, just out of reach of each other's spines, but also still pretty cold. This is the hedgehog's dilemma. It's a metaphor for the difficulty of human relationships. We desire to be close to one another, but in doing so, we only end up hurting each other. So, in the end, we all decide to keep our distance. This does not fulfill us completely, but it's a good enough compromise. The fable was originally written by Schopenhauer, but it quickly started to live a life on its own. In Schopenhauer's original, the fable is about porcupines, not hedgehogs. Sigmund Freud referenced the hedgehog's dilemma in one of his works, which then popularized the image. In Schopenhauer's original, the tale functions not only as a depiction of the trickiness of human relationships and the tendency to hurt those around us, even if we don't want to, but it's also about the need for social isolation. Yet, whoever has a lot of inner warmth prefers to stay away from society in order neither to cause trouble nor to receive it. If you can be your own source of warmth, you don't need other hedgehogs. This is Schopenhauer's answer to the hedgehog problem. Simply don't bother. Be your own source of warmth. We've done an entire video where we dive deeper on Schopenhauer's recommendation for a solitary life. Check out the link in the description. But beyond Schopenhauer's recommendations to just not play the game, this fable is not about providing a solution, but about explaining a problem. If you ever found it hard to connect to others or relate to them on a deep level, or if you find that you tend to hurt those close to you, the hedgehog's problem likely has something to do with that. It's simply who we are. As humans, we are tortured beings who desire a short break from the monotony of existence, and we seek out the company of others in doing so. But soon enough, Someone hurts us, or we hurt them. And next time, we won't be so open or welcoming. We shield ourselves. Like the hedgehogs from the fable, we'll keep our distance. There are three ways to deal with this reality. We've already covered Schopenhauer's advice. Just refuse to play the game and be your own source of warmth. Schopenhauer recognized that this is not a workable solution for the vast majority of people. After all, humans are social animals. In fact, Schopenhauer would argue that only someone of a very high intellect could bear to be alone for such a long period of time, because only those with a high intellect can stay occupied. Others will succumb to boredom and seek out other people to entertain themselves. An intelligent person, by contrast, can just be alone with his thoughts. This brings us to the second option, which is to just do nothing. The hedgehogs ultimately find an equilibrium where they are not hurting each other anymore at the cost of still being a bit cold. Translation. We only allow a little bit of intimacy into our lives, which is fine, but not enough. Still, it's as good as it gets. Most people are perfectly happy with this compromise. That leaves us with a third option, which is to just own it. Seek intimacy, try to form friendships without being closed off, and just be vulnerable, knowing that there is the potential to get hurt. But the point is that the friendship might be worth the pain in the end. Schopenhauer's tendency to shy away from suffering, to close himself off, is very typical. Schopenhauer saw suffering as something inherent in life, and therefore he tried to dodge life. That's what his incitement to asceticism is all about, removing yourself from the world and from things that sustain life such as food or sex. This is a point where Nietzsche departed from his former mentor. He also saw suffering as inherent to life, but he championed an ethos whereby we seek to live vigorously anyway. In that respect, Nietzsche would be more understanding towards the final option we discussed where we seek out friendship and companionship, despite the inevitable hurt that will result. Ultimately, we all have to make our own decision. Is the vulnerability from intimacy worth it or not? In this way, our reaction to the hedgehog's dilemma tells us something about who we are as a person. It's about our tolerance for risk, our willingness to potentially get hurt in order to get a much sweeter reward. Despite being about friendship on the surface, the hedgehog's dilemma is on a more fundamental level about suffering and how we choose to deal with it. There are no highs without lows, and our willingness to endure or even embrace suffering is determined by our view on life. Nietzsche champions the path of going through the pain, descending into the deep, visiting the underworld, and coming back to the surface with a pot of gold. 
Schopenhauer represents staying where you are, avoiding pain and pleasure in equal measure, striving for a life of tranquility rather than glory. Which path do you choose? Thank you for watching. More content coming soon. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss it and leave a comment for the algorithm if you're so inclined. A special thanks goes out to our Patreons whose generous support keeps the channel afloat. If you want to support the channel, kindly visit our Patreon page where you'll also find exclusive videos. Again, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.